Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be checking out the first official insider build of Windows 11 that was just recently released by Microsoft. This is build 22000.51 and if you're a member of the Windows Insider program, you can get it right now by going into your Windows Update settings in the settings application and uh, checking for updates and there should be a, a new update for this build. Now, now, I would highly recommend, and Microsoft certainly recommends, that if you do want to check this out, do so on a secondary device or in a virtual machine, because this is a development build. There are bugs. We will be getting into some of those later on in this video. It's not intended to be a daily use operating system yet. So just to show you, if we open up Winver here, this is again build 22000.51, though it does identify the version number as 21H2, which is a Windows 10 version number 21h2 is currently in the insider phase it hasn't been officially released yet but this is an update to windows 10 so this insider build of windows 11 here is just using that version number even though this is a completely different version of the operating system technically but uh, there are a lot of similarities and you can see right off the bat if you saw my original video or if you saw any screenshots of the leaked build i'm sure this looks extremely familiar to what you saw and there's a good reason for that because the leaked builds build number was 21,996.1, and again, this build is 22,000.51. So those build numbers are very close, but that doesn't mean there are no changes in this operating system or in this build of the operating system here. There absolutely are, and we're gonna jump into them right now. So one of the first things is the new file explorer design. Now, the design of the contents of the window have remained unchanged. We have the same icon, same address bar, same search bar. Uh, all of this up here, at least this, this row here was in Windows 10, right, and Windows 8 before that. What has changed is what we have on the menu bar up here because the ribbon interface has been completely removed. It is no longer here. It has been simplified with this single row of icons. So let's go to the desktop here and uh, let's check these items out from left to right. So the first option is new, which allows you to make a new folder or a new item. Now there is a redundancy here because within new item we have folder again. So both of these items do the same thing. You've got new shortcut, bitmap image, text document, compresses it folder. In fact, these are the same options that you would get in the right click context menu. When you right click and go to new and you get all those items there, you have that same exact list of items here. And we will get into the context menu in a moment because it has been redesigned as well from what we saw in the last build. Now, right here, you've got cut, copy, paste. This is rename. If I actually hover over, say, this Microsoft Edge shortcut here, you can see I can rename it. I can share it, move it to the trash, or recycle it since we're on Windows here. My sorting options are over here, so this allows me to sort items by name, date, modified type, etc. Next to that, you have your layout and view options, which allows you to change the view of the folder. You can view large icons, medium icons, details, etc. And one of the other neat things is this compact view button here, which as you see, it says decrease space between items. Now, one of the things I mentioned in the last video on this, the spacing in between the folders is pretty significant. This is not how it was on Windows 10. Windows 10, there was like essentially no space in between these items here. Now you can see there is a prominent pronounced space in between our folders here. So what this compact view does is it gets rid of that and it makes it more Windows 10 like. So now you can see they're closer together and it makes the quick access and everything over here closer together. And this is exactly how Windows 10's File Explorer currently behaves. So here is a window for my host computer for comparison. You can see how things look. And yeah, this is a, a very welcome feature by me personally because I'm not a huge fan of this non-compact view. Now let's talk about the context menu, which as you can see, has been changed here uh, pretty substantially. Now in the last build, the leaked build of Windows 11, the context menu was updated, but the contents of it essentially remained unchanged. It was just the design of it, you know, it got rounded corners and it fit in better with the design language that Microsoft is going for with Windows 11 here. But now, just like in File Explorer, 
there is more spacing in between these items here. Uh, now, it just so happens that the context menu displayed properly when I happen to right click it here, but there is a bug with the context menu that it normally does not display properly. So you can see when I'm right clicking here, notice how for like a split second, you can see the edge of the context menu and then it just gets cut off. And okay, so here it is working now. So this is how it's supposed to look, but most of the time it does not display properly and it displays with this cut off edge here to where when I try to go to new items here, you can see there's this massive gap in between these two menus here. The sub menus also have this new animation where they fly down from the top, which is pretty nice. But this context menu is not complete. You can see there's a show more options button down here. When you click on this, it brings up the older style context menu, which I much prefer compared to this much larger one. And uh, this is the same when you right click on icons. So if I, I right click on Firefox, for instance, uh, you can see it now displays properly here. It seems to display properly when you right click on an item. Uh, as you can see here, the one for recycle bin has not been updated yet, but everything else, including when I right click on this folder here does have this newer design. Now, one of the interesting changes they've made is they've added this new bar down here at the very bottom. And this is also present, uh, uh, what? Oh, I think, ex oh, Explorer just crashed there. Okay. Uh, yeah, now this, the position of this moves, like if I click on or right click on Microsoft Edge here, you see it's at the very top. This is supposed to be closest to your cursor, but this is a UI element from Microsoft Office, where when you right click, you get these kind of quick options to cut, copy, paste. But yeah, you still also get the, the show more options down here. And you can see how large this menu is as it is. Imagine them bringing all these options over to this style context menu, that's not really gonna work, especially with the resolution I've got this VM set to right now, like it would go from top to bottom. I'm certain that this show more options menu is a placeholder because, you know, this is not really user friendly, having two separate menus here, like to get to an option, I have to click on this, it opens up a new menu. So this is this is certainly a placeholder, uh, at least I would hope it is. Now let's move on to the Action Center as it has been substantially updated compared to what we've seen previously. And the first major change is there's no longer an Action Center button in the system tray. Normally, there is a dedicated button in between the clock and the show desktop button, which is still here, by the way, Way, though it is really, really tiny. It's not even a pronounced button anymore, but it does still work as you can see. But yeah, there's no action center button anymore. This is because the action center has been split up. So it's no longer one UI element anymore. It's actually two now. So to get to your notifications, you now click on the clock down here, which now not only opens up the calendar, but also your notifications up here. So you can still make the calendar larger by clicking this button here. And yes, this takes effect even when you close out of it and go back into it. And obviously the design of the calendar has been changed along with the notifications area up here. So if I make this smaller, the notification center becomes larger. And yeah, here's all your notifications. I can click on clear all to get rid of them and that uh, moves the entire uh, notification center away. So now nothing will show up. So it doesn't show up unless you have a new notification. Now to get to your actual actions like focus assist and all of that, you now have to click on your network and volume buttons down here, which are no longer two separate buttons. You can see it's one combined button here. So you click on this and it gives you access to your volume slider, your controls from Action Center, how it was in Windows 10. So you've got night light, focus assist, accessibility options, etc. And presumably this would also show you Wi-Fi networks to connect to if you were using Wi-Fi to connect to the internet, which in this case I'm not since this is a virtual machine. Now you can modify this by clicking on the pencil button down here to add keyboard layout and project, which are your two other options here. And last but not least, we have a shortcut down here to open up the newly redesigned settings application, which we will touch on in a moment. But that is the current state of the Action Center, and it'll be interesting to see how Microsoft changes it throughout the rest of Windows 11's development process. Next thing I want to touch on is the taskbar. You may have noticed that it has changed a little bit compared to the leaked build, specifically the size of it. So in the leaked build, the size of the taskbar compared to Windows 10 increased by a hair to where there was a third row over here in the clock 
for the day of the week. Another pretty significant change that I didn't touch on in the last video is Microsoft's apparent removal of the use small taskbar icons option in the settings application. Now, when Windows 7 was introduced and the super bar, which is the larger taskbar uh, size was introduced, Microsoft had the option to where you could shrink that down to make it look more like the traditional taskbar that people were used to at that time from Windows Vista and prior. And that is a feature that is still in Windows 10, but in Windows 11, it isn't. So if I were to right click on the taskbar and go to taskbar settings and I scroll down here to taskbar behaviors where I can change the alignment of the taskbar to the left, I can automatically hide it, show badges, but there's nothing about use small taskbar icons. Now the good news is if you want to change the size of your taskbar, you can by adding a D word value to the Windows registry. And you can actually choose between three different sizes, small, medium, or large. But like I said, the option is nowhere to be found in the settings app. So it's possible that it could have just been removed temporarily while it was being redesigned. Or perhaps Microsoft is going to be removing that feature from Windows 11. But let's hope that that isn't the case. Something else of note that I found out while, and this is, by the way, this is the new settings app. We will touch on this. I mean, we have it opened here, so we will go through it. But... I have not activated this build. I, I've not put in my Windows 10 Pro product key, which by the way, yes, you can use to activate Windows 11 builds, but I can still customize these settings here. So you see right up here, it says you need to activate Windows before you can personalize your PC. Now in the leaked build, I was not able to move the taskbar over to the left side without activating the build with a Windows 10 Pro product key, but I can do that here with no problem. Now this is interesting, and my guess is this is a bug because if you go back up a page to this the regular personalization settings here and I go to background you can see none of this can be changed I cannot change the, the desktop wallpaper I mean you can by just downloading an image and right clicking and setting as desktop background you've been able to do that for years it is a bit of a workaround by the way but uh, I can't change the theme if I try to go here I can't change any of this. I cannot change the colors. I can't enable dark mode, but I can go to taskbar and uh, change the alignment of the taskbar. So maybe they're going to intentionally allow you to change the taskbar personalization settings without it being activated. But I would assume if it says, you need to activate Windows before you can personalize your PC. That would apply to all personalization settings as it has in Windows 10. I mean, in Windows 10, without it being activated, you cannot, for example, enable small taskbar icons. You have to have the build activated or your operating system activated to do that. So it'll be interesting to see if this gets changed, but my uh, guess now is this is just a bug. But yes, by the way, this is the new settings application. It has been substantially redesigned. Uh, you've got new icons all across the board a new uh, menu design here so you kind of have this looks similar to what we saw in the new action center and just the design of uh, these these buttons here this this really fits in uh, with that design and uh, yeah it looks very very nice I honestly really like it I like these new icons I think it looks great it'll be neat to see uh, where it goes but yeah there you have it now let's talk about some things that have not changed and one of those is the start menu it has not been changed compared to to what we saw in the last build. You have the exact same design. You have the same pre-installed applications, which is still kind of unfortunate. The design of the all apps menu, this is exactly what we saw in the leaked build. Nothing of note here. The getting started application or the get started, let's see if this has changed. I've actually not uh, tested this off camera. Uh, yes, it has. The images have been changed. So previously in the leaked build, there were images of a Windows 10 installation here. Search has also remained unchanged compared to what we saw in the leaked build uh, in terms of design at least uh, so I'm not really going to go into that but there it is something that has changed is the widgets panel which previously you would open this up you would have to sign in with your Microsoft account but you had these widgets here you could not move them around you could not add more widgets now you can I can move these around I can rearrange them however I want uh, they no longer when you try to drag them off to your desktop they no longer create a uh, shortcut to a page on msn.com like it did before so that that has been fixed and you can add new widgets now so I can go 
go here and I can add uh, the eSports widget, tips, calendar, traffic, to do. Uh, this is all tied to your Microsoft account. You have to be signed in to use it. Last but not least, let's talk about the Microsoft Store as it has gotten a visual overhaul. So this is the new design of it here. Now, unfortunately, the ability to run Android apps on Windows 11, which was a major feature announced at the June 24th keynote, uh, that has not been implemented yet. And once that feature gets implemented, I assume it will in one of these insider builds, uh, I will be doing a video on that. At least I want to, but we'll see what happens when, when that time eventually comes around. Now, as I said earlier, there are a few bugs, well, more than a few bugs with this build of Windows 11, and I will have this NeoWin article down below if you'd like to read up on them. So yeah, just another huge disclaimer here. If you're planning on installing this build, just don't do it on your main computer because there are more than a few bugs in the operating system. And I mean, this is a development build. You should not uh, install it on uh, a machine that you use daily for doing your work or playing games or, or whatever, right? But using it in a VM or on a secondary machine that's that's really what this was designed for here to test it out that's what the insider program is all about but yeah there you have it guys that is a first look at windows 11 build 22000.51 the first publicly available insider build released by microsoft guys if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed and turn on notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever i upload a new video which i do multiple times every single week on this channel Channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.